Welcome to our world news program. Today, we're diving into some intriguing stories from around the globe. First up, Asian shares took a hit today with most markets in the red, except for Tokyo's Nikkei 225 which managed to post gains. The yen weakened further, showing signs of economic uncertainty in Japan. Next, a new kind of tourism has emerged in Israel as visitors flock to the south to witness the destruction caused by Hamas' recent attack. High-profile names like Jerry Seinfeld and Elon Musk have made their way to the devastated areas, turning the tragic aftermath into a somber tourist attraction. Lastly, China is grappling with a decline in billion-dollar startups, prompting President Xi Jinping to consider deploying state funds and reopening IPO markets to revive the entrepreneurial spirit. The government is looking to state-backed insurance groups and pension funds to boost domestic investments amid a slowdown. Please stay tuned for detailed coverage of these stories and more. Associated Press, Asian shares began the week on a somber note, with most markets in the region trailing behind after Wall Street concluded another victorious week. Despite Nvidia's recent dip from its remarkable surge, the US stock market managed to maintain its momentum. Tokyo's Nikkei 225 index was the exception, climbing 0.7% to 38,869.94, as the yen weakened to 159.93 per dollar. Minutes from the Japanese central bank's last policy meeting suggested that any changes to the interest rate would hinge on clear economic indicators, putting further pressure on the yen. Meanwhile, Hong Kong's Hang Seng fell by 1.2%, and the Shanghai Composite dropped by 1%. Australia's S and PASX 200 and South Korea's Kospi both dipped by 0.7%. On Friday, the S and P 500 slipped slightly by 0.2%, while the Dow Jones Industrial Average edged up marginally. Nvidia's stock, which has soared over 1,000% since October 2022 due to high demand for its AI-powered chips, saw its first losing week in nine weeks. In the bond market, U.S. Treasury yields initially fell but later recovered, reflecting mixed signals about business activity in Europe and the U.S. oil prices also saw minor declines, with U.S. benchmark crude dropping to $80.65 per barrel. Associated Press, in Israel, a new form of tourism has emerged in the wake of Hamas' devastating attack on October 7. Celebrities, politicians, and influencers now include visits to the ravaged southern regions in their itineraries. Notable figures like Jerry Seinfeld, Elon Musk, and Michael Douglas have visited kibbutz near Oz, where Hamas militants killed over 20 residents and kidnapped more than 80. Irat Lahav, a spokeswoman for the kibbutz, emphasizes the importance of these visits to help people understand the scale of the tragedy. While some areas remain closed to the public, organized tours for dignitaries and celebrities continue. In Starrett, resilience tours connect visitors with survivors who share their harrowing experiences. The city has seen a significant increase in visitors, with around 200,000 people visiting in the first half of 2024. The site of the Nova Music Festival, where 364 people died, has also become a pilgrimage site. Despite the destruction, some residents are looking towards rebuilding, with plans to demolish and reconstruct parts of kibbutz near Oz. The tours aim to provide both an economic and morale boost to the affected communities while preserving the memory of those lost. Reuters Breaking Views President Xi Jinping of China is keen to understand why the country is lagging in producing new billion-dollar startups, or unicorns. In 2018, China was leading the world with a new unicorn emerging every 3.8 days, but last year saw only 24 new unicorns, compared to 41 in the US. The decline is partly due to Beijing's regulatory crackdowns on the tech sector, which have deterred investors. High-profile interventions in companies like Didi Global and Ant Group have wiped out billions in value. To counter this, Chinese officials are now focusing on fostering long-term patient capital, potentially tapping into state-backed insurance groups and pension funds. The cabinet has also indicated a willingness to broaden exit channels for venture capital, which could lead to more IPOs. However, the IPO market has been sluggish, with funds raised in the first four months of 2024 dropping nearly 90% compared to the previous year. Despite the challenges, officials are hopeful that a more balanced approach could reignite the entrepreneurial spirit and drive innovation, even if it means dealing with speculative bubbles in emerging technologies. <music> Associated Press, a suspected Chinese state-sponsored hacking group, Red Juliet, has intensified its cyber attacks on Taiwanese organizations, particularly targeting sectors such as government, education, technology, and diplomacy. These attacks were observed between November 2023 and April 2024, coinciding with Taiwan's presidential elections and subsequent administrative changes. Red Juliet, believed to be based in Fuzhou, China, 
exploited vulnerabilities in SoftEther VPN software to access servers of various organizations, including those in Laos, Kenya, Rwanda, Hong Kong, South Korea, the US, and Djibouti. The group's activities align with Chinese state-sponsored hacking patterns, likely aiming to collect intelligence to support Beijing's policymaking on cross-strait relations. The deteriorating relations between China and Taiwan, especially after the election of Taiwan's new president Lai ching te have further fueled these cyber-espionage efforts. South China Morning Post, amid China's economic challenges, young people are increasingly turning to lottery tickets as a source of entertainment and stress relief. Michelle Zhang, a cross-border e-commerce worker, frequently buys scratch cards, but recently found many stores in Guangzhou out of stock, a situation mirrored in Beijing and other prosperous provinces. The China Sports Lottery and China Welfare Lottery, the only legal forms of gambling in China, have seen a surge in sales, particularly the Guagualu Instant Lottery, which accounted for 26.1% of total lottery sales in the first quarter of the year. This trend is partly driven by the uneven post-pandemic economic recovery, high youth unemployment, and social media influence. Despite the entertainment value, the scarcity of tickets has led to operational difficulties for lottery retailers, reflecting the broader economic and social stresses facing young Chinese people. Nikkei Asia, the Philippines is confronting the complex issue of Philippine offshore gaming operators, POGOs, which recent raids have linked to China-related national security concerns. These online casinos, which flourished under the Duterte administration, are now seen as potential Trojan horses by analysts, posing risks such as money laundering, human trafficking, and infiltration by foreign syndicates. Raids in Luzon uncovered criminal activities and even a Chinese People's Liberation Army uniform, heightening public and national security fears. Defense Minister Gilberto Teodoro Jr. and National Security Advisor Eduardo Ano have expressed concerns, emphasizing the need to address illegal POGOs. The industry, which generated significant revenue, faces scrutiny as experts warn of its potential to compromise the Philippines' security framework. The Chinese embassy in Manila has denied any connections to these operators, advocating for a ban on POGOs to eliminate this social ill. The issue serves as a critical test for President Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s political credibility and his administration's ability to manage foreign relations and internal security. South China Morning Post reports that North Korea has issued a stern warning to the United States, suggesting that continued support for Ukraine could lead to a new world war. This comes after a pact was signed between Russian President Vladimir Putin and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un pledging mutual military assistance in the event of armed aggression. North Korea's top military official, Pak jong chan stated that Russia has the right to any form of retaliatory strike if provoked by the US. The deal between Russia and North Korea has raised concerns in Washington and Seoul, who accuse the two nations of violating international laws through arms trade. The Washington Post revealed that Russia may have received around 1.6 million artillery shells from North Korea. Additionally, there are reports that North Korea plans to send construction workers to Russian-occupied territories in Ukraine to assist in rebuilding efforts, further solidifying their alliance. In another roundup by South China Morning Post, the weekend saw a variety of significant stories from across Asia. Chinese Filipinos are increasingly worried about the rise of Sinophobia and being labeled as the other in the Philippines. Meanwhile, India is leveraging cricket diplomacy to strengthen ties with the US, leading South Asia's charge in engaging through sport. Indonesia's ambitions to become a chip powerhouse are lagging behind Malaysia and Singapore, raising questions about its future in the tech industry. Despite health risks, many Japanese workers find smoking at work beneficial, reflecting cultural nuances and workplace habits. Lastly, Hong Kong is hosting a retrospective of architect I.M. Pei's work, despite his reluctance to have won offering a rare glimpse into the legacy of the celebrated architect. In a significant milestone for China's space ambitions, the state-owned Shanghai Academy of Spaceflight Technology, SAST, successfully conducted the country's most advanced reusable rocket test. The test, which took place in the Gobi Desert, involved a vertical takeoff and landing, VTVL, of a rocket that reached an altitude of 12 kilometers before making a controlled descent and landing. This achievement puts SAST ahead of its private sector rivals, including Beijing-based Landspace, whose own reusable rocket tests have faced delays. The success of this test paves the way for SAST's next goal, a VTVL test at an altitude of 70 km, scheduled for 2025. The rocket was powered by three engines burning methane and liquid oxygen, highlighting the shift towards more efficient and environmentally friendly fuels in China's space program.
South China Morning Post, in 2013, Hong Kong real estate tycoon Cecil Chow made headlines worldwide by offering 1 billion Hong Kong dollars, 128 million US dollars, as a dowry to any man willing to marry his daughter, Gigi Chow. This audacious act thrust Gigi into the spotlight, forcing her to publicly come out as a lesbian amid a media frenzy. This unexpected turn of events became a pivotal moment for Gigi, propelling her into the role of a passionate LGBTQ activist. By 2019, she co-founded Hong Kong Marriage Equality, a group dedicated to fighting the discrimination same-sex couples face in the city. In an interview with the South China Morning Post, Gigi candidly discusses her complex relationship with her father and her unwavering commitment to championing LGBTQ rights. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email. News breaks, buzz the ground, stories spin, walls come down, voices merge in the sound, faces mix in the crowd, broadcasters paint the scene, world events on our screen, every link a different theme, words collide in the stream, six degrees connect the dots, background stories more than not. the globe, spin the threads in a stroke, every story wears a robe, truth and lies in their code, journalists dig real deep, secrets out, they don't sleep, every angle they will keep, in the news we take a leap, new perspectives day by day, hidden truths come to play, in the background shades of grey.